Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today I'm going to be doing a how-to-play video on Forager. So let's get started. So Forager has been out for a couple of years now. It is a true skirmish level game. That is, it requires only about six figures on a, on a side. It is set in the peninsula period of the Napoleonic Wars and is designed to be played on a 4x4 four four table. So it meets a lot of uh, requirements for modern skirmish gaming. Uh, there's no solo version of it. I'm going to be playing a solo game now, but it isn't really designed to be played that way. It is meant to be played one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I've seen it played in multiple player games. In fact, uh, the um, the American distributor of this uh, game, he'll run it at conventions and shows with um, as many people as want to play as, as come up, he gives them a character or two and lets them go. But it's designed to have about six characters. Uh, what we're going to do uh, is carry you off to the peninsula to a small uh, Spanish farm. So let's go to the gaming table. This is the table we have set up for today's day of Forager. This is somewhere in the peninsula. We're playing the part of, of Santiago Mas. Uh, Santiago Mas is the leader of a small group of Spanish guerrillas. So Santiago Mas is raiding this farm in this little valley. Unbeknownst to uh, Santiago, he is not alone. A small detail of the uh, 9th Regiment de Legere has also been sent here for the same purpose of trying to acquire forage. This is under the command of Leon Gabriel. The figures are deployed on the table already. Santiago is there in the blue trousers out front. So there's men over there in the trees there. Gabriel. And his men are coming up behind the hacienda itself here. He has two of his soldiers with him. Then over here is his sergeant, also with two soldiers. So that's the layout of the ground, the placement of the troops for the beginning of the table. Their goal is to steal as much forage as they can take home. Now, this game always begins with rolling for an initiative. The initiative doesn't have the same effect that it would in most games. The uh, initiative is basically used for solving uh, ties and things. The uh, blue for the French, of course, and red for uh, okay. The blue have the uh, have the initiative. Uh, the turn sequence consists of the movement phase, the shooting phase, the combat phase, the recovery phase and so on. We've already rolled overall initiative to set who solves ties, and then we go into the movement phase. Now movement phase, the activated characters work exactly backwards of their skill level. So from the lowest skill up, uh, each character can move up to eight inches per turn. The once per game a character can sprint up to 12 inches. If uh, a character wants, if he needs to race somebody, if he has a higher skill, he can actually move uh, first. But the usual idea is that he can move second so that he can respond to the movement of the people above us. Now we have uh, a couple of twos out here. We'll move the two first. The two is over here. He can move out eight inches. And he's going to... Go ahead. He's not going to move the full eight inches, I don't think. I want to try to get some cover of this rock while he looks for a target. That's the number two. We also have a three. And he's over here. And he's going to move in a similar fashion, patrolling off this way. Only the Spanish have a four. Alejandro Salcido. And where is Alejandro? Alejandro is over here. Oh, 
Eliador is going to move his way towards that tree. Now we go to fives. I think we have a couple of fives. They got a five over there, and we have... We move ours first, unless he wanted to beat ours. Ours is a Mattis Kiesta. He is right here. He's going to move forward and try with his pal. And there's... Sixes. All right, that is both Diego Cheda and Esteban Salcida. Diego is going to take a picture, take a point by this other tree. And Salcido is going to take a point behind the oil press. That's sixes, then we go to sevens. Their sergeant is a seven, and my leader is a seven. My leader's gonna go ahead and... He can't make it up there. He's gonna take it behind this tree. Their sergeant's gonna come on up to here. And that leaves, I'm not sure what happened over here. So that goes to the shooting phase now. Shooting phase is done in the order of skill. So the very first chance to shoot would be Lieutenant uh, Gabriel. Uh, not that he's going to shoot, have any target or anything from that range with a pistol. Uh, the next is going to follow to the sergeant, who's coming up the back there. I don't think he, I don't think he wants to shoot anyway, with that target at this range. Uh, my leader has only a pistol, so, uh, so he's not, he's not going to shoot. This, the pistol, the ranges of this are pretty, pretty small, so it's, it's, and you have to reload and all that stuff, so. So I'm going to fire with Diago, who's got a shot. Diago's in this tree here, and he's got a shot right at that lead man coming down the road. It's still kind of long. I don't know that it's going to, going to work. But uh, we're going to do what we can. So this is a uh, smoothbore busket. Line of sight in this is always 360, so you don't have to worry about which way characters are facing, except for what looks good. Target has to shoot at the closest enemy, which I believe he is doing. He's certainly the closest he can see. Uh, so present fire. Uh, to shoot at another character, the shooter rolls D10s equal to his combat value. Most things in this game is done as D10s. His combat value is three. Now, he's firing 3d10, but the modifiers are all going to come out of these as well. So, um, the fact that it's a smoothbore musket, uh, let's see, how many inches is he? Dude, this is long. What that means is he doesn't have a modifier to his die roll, uh, but he's still going to get his, he still has three, so that's not bad. We roll the three of these. He needs sixes. He has one hit. Put some smoke on there to show that his gun is unloaded. And that actually counts as two hits because it was a 10. So now we do the uh, saving throw. The, uh, the man's in the open from that angle. He has to make a saving throw roll. He does have some modifiers because the fire removed. That gives him... Uh, a plus one. He's got, first off, he's got a number of equal, of dice equal to his uh, field craft, which is only one. Uh, but he gets one because the fire was moving before he shot. Target is not obscured. Target did not charge, sprint, or gallop. Target is not mounted. So that's all he gets. He needs sixes. He needs two to stop the two hits that he gets. He stops one of those hits, but one gets through. So he does get hit once 
by that shot. So what happens now is we go to find out the effect on the butcher's bill. The, uh, the way this works um, is we, we roll two, uh, D100. So we'll use one blue and one red. We rolled 86, and then we cross-reference. This is one of the fun things about the game is this chart. It's also a little random, but, uh, but it's fun. So we roll to see what the effect was. We rolled at 86. We check down here. Uh, I'm bleeding. Uh, the wound will not stop bleeding. The character suffers two fatigue hits and one further fatigue hit at the end of each recovery phase. He counts as distracted in the shooting and the combat. Uh, what that means is he's, he is bleeding. He's taken two hits. He will be taking more. Uh, he can reduce it by making a field craft roll on the recovery roll, in which case he'll, uh, he'll have further hits, but he'll stop bleeding. So he has taken two hits, and he is bleeding. These uh, tokens I'm using come to me by way of Phalanx uh, Consortium, who made them specifically for this game. The one I just put on there is a uh, I'm bleeding. That's our first wound of the game. That yeah, may be the only wound. Um, I mean, not of the game. <laughs> Maybe the only wound of this, the only shot of this phase. That was, um, that was on six. My other six cannot shoot. Their six could shoot, I think, but he's gonna, he's gonna run a risk of hitting that guy. I'm not missing. What the hell? We're gonna return fire. Leonard Florian is going to shoot right back. He's way over here by the well. So another one of these long shots. Um, Thirty-four inches. So he's going to lose his his shooting. Normally would have been two. He gets one hit. Uh, the defender defends with Diego has a field craft of two. The fire moved, so he gets three. And he saves it. So that's the way it's supposed to go. Uh, no hits there. And when we go down to five, I think I'm going to go ahead and have Mattis shoot. Mattis is shooting straight down the road by that shrine towards uh, the wounded fellow walking down the street. Uh, his combat is three. That's 30, so that's still going to be out of no extras or minuses. Uh, he hits with one. This poor fellow who's already been hit the one time, only has one, he gets two because of the cover. He manages to stop both of those. Here's Fieldcraft two, no pluses, no hit. We'll go ahead and shoot with him too. This is dangerous. Shouldn't unload all your weapons like that. No hits. I'm gonna shot over here. That's two hits, almost three. Stops one, but he still receives one hit. So we have another butcher's bill. This is 97. I wouldn't think that's good. 95 to 100. Not me taters. The character is hit where no man wants to be hit. Luckily, the ball was spent and the character counts as distracted. So he doesn't take any hits for that. He would have if he had other, other shots. We'd rolled higher. Every time you hit with, with multiple wounds, you still take extra damage beyond what's here. This is only for the first one. 
presently distracted and we've got recoveries to do. On a recovery phase you have to decide how to use your recovery. Uh, there's a number of things you can do. Recovering from the illness is an obvious one, uh, but so is uh, reloading weapons. You only have so many dice rolls, die rolls to use though. So this goes with the order of the highest skill. The fellow here, uh, Leonard Florian, is going to use his field craft roll. He has one. He's going to use it to try to reload. He has to roll five or higher. He does not. That's all the sixes on the French side. I have a bunch of sixes on the Spanish side. And again, it's going to be a bunch of reloads. So we're going to try to, we're going to, try to reload for um, Diego here. Diego has two. He's going to use them both. He is successful. So the only five out here has done nothing. So we'll go down to the fours. The fours are mostly us. That is him. He's got to do the uh, taters. He's got two field craft. He uses that. Neither of those are successful. Uh, not good for him. And then we go down to the threes. We got a couple of threes and they have been hit. One of them. Well, why not just reload? He only has one. He does not reload. Uh, the other is the no uh, is there. He needs to reload. He has one. He is successful at reloading. And lastly is our wounded soldier. Uh, this is Raymond Valery. He's going to try to stop his bleeding. He only has one field craft. He is successful. So he is wounded, but he is no longer bleeding. Now we go on. The second turn with the initiative going to the uh, Spanish. First move is going to go to the, to the number two down there. He needs to get some cover. Uh, let's see, crossing a wall. It's two inches to cross a wall. I'm going to go ahead and do that and try to get some. That would be six inches then. I'm going to try to get him behind the cover of that tree since he's already been wounded. And there's a couple of threes. He's already in cover. Then it's going to take us to fours. So we've got some movement going on. We've got some shooting. The shooting, uh, Sergeant has a shot, and it's right there. Sergeant's going to shoot. He's got a combat of three, and he is shooting. Over 12. Wow. A 10, a 7, and a 6. That is four shots. Four shots on poor... Uh, Poor Diego there. Diego has a field craft of two. His target did move and he is, I would argue, in cover. He stops three, but he still gets one. So that's still gonna come in through the butcher bill. 
at 75 blast. I love that. The character's kit saves them. The character suffers one fatigue hit unless they discard a piece of equipment that they are carrying. And this can include a weapon. So he's going to take a hit point unless he throws something away. Uh, let's see if he's got anything he can throw away. Uh, he's got a bag of provisions. We're going to go ahead and throw those provisions away. That's cooler when it's an item like a sword or something where it makes a little bit more sense. But basically, uh, that's, that round ended up ripping his food off instead of hitting him. Came really close. And that takes us to sixes. That is one of our sixes, so I'm going to return that fire. He doesn't have any pluses or anything. The, uh, that's three hits on the sergeant. Uh, the sergeant has Fieldcraft 2. He's in wide open. Target moved, so 3. Wow. He stopped all of them. He actually would have stopped 5 hits. So he knows what he's doing. So yeah, let's go ahead and fire that. So. Oh. I'm going to go ahead and shoot, shoot a lieutenant. His combat is 2. Nothing. So no shots on the on the lieutenant. That's gonna come and that's gonna come. And that's gonna come. So if you haven't reloaded successfully on a field craft roll, you do uh, automatically reload. So that's taken us through the shooting and into the um, Recovery phase. Again, this goes in order of uh, their abilities. So it's going to start with uh, Gabrielle, who doesn't have anything. And then it goes over to the sergeant over there. Sergeant's going to try to use his field craft to reload. He's successful. Uh, from there, it's going to go to our first in command, who hasn't done anything. He doesn't need to do anything going to go down to six. Six is both Esteban and Diego. Diego can try to reload. His field craft is two. Diego reloads. Esteban. Esteban's over here. Esteban is going to try to capture a sheep. Takes seven to capture it. He got it. So we have a sheep. We have captured one sheep. He's not reloaded though. Aleandro is going to try to deal with his taters. He's got Fieldcraft 2. He is successful. That looks like it. So we go to turn 3. We roll again. Again, the Spanish have it. So we go into uh, movement. So the first go is going to be little two. He's going to try to get that donkey. So that's where we're going. Now we're going to start shooting. The officer doesn't have a shot. Sergeant doesn't have a shot yet. Oh, man. Leonard Florian is shooting at, uh, at, um, at Mattis there. Florian's 
Combat is two. He's almost in a plus one situation. He did not move. That is two hits. So he's in, uh, he's obscured. He has not moved. He is obscured. Oh yes, he has moved. And, and Fieldcraft one. So he stops one of those hits, but the other one actually gets through. Matt, Mattis is hit. It is a 51. Leg it. Uh, the near miss is all too much for this character. They turn and run. The character must retreat at a sprint speed towards their base edge. If in combat, suffer negative one fatigue hit for each character they are in combat with. All right, so he gets scared. He takes off. He does not take any additional points. Runs off for 12 inches. I missed this last time, but this... Uh, this result is printed in red on the butcher's bill list. And what that means is it causes a battle event. Uh, we missed it a couple turns earlier ago, but we will not miss it this time. 32. These are special things. That should have only been a D10. Nine. Out of breath. The player who triggered the event can play this uh, on any enemy character that the character is out of breath and must miss their next activation while they rest unless they get their breath back by rolling six in the recovery phase. Hmm. So these can only be applied once per turn. Let's put it, I'll put it on the guy that's going for the sheet. All right, that was a good turn for them, wasn't it? Um, that was turn six. Uh, now we're going to go to turn five. So they've got one. I think I forgot one of my guys. Where is he? Where's my priest dude? Yeah, he's way back here. That's uh, Alandro Abasco, or Father uh, Alandro. Brother Alandro? Brother Alandro. Uh, kind of forgot about him for a moment there. Run into the trees. He really should have been in the... You know what, I'm going to go ahead and give him a full foot movement because he should have... That's a five, and the other one just ran. So there are five. He's not shooting. I think technically he can shoot. So let's go ahead and shoot. All right, so that's uh, combat two. Gonna shoot over here. Two hits. He's got fieldcraft is two. He's got some cover. And that guy did move. So he makes that. He is fine. And lastly, is three, three, and two. Three and two. So, he's gonna fire. How about his two? No hits. And two, One hit. And he stops it. All right, so lots of shooting. All right, that takes us through uh, the shooting phase of the turn. We go into the uh, recovery phase, again in order. So the first one's the officer's got none. We're gonna go to uh, our sergeant. The sergeant's over there. He's done nothing. Uh, it's going to go to our commander. Our commander is going to try to capture a sheep. He is successful. We have caught two sheep now. Now we'll go to sixes. 
And the guy in blue and I can't do much of anything. The man in brown cannot do anything. He, there six. Just going to try to reload. And he's where he's right there. His field craft is one. He is not successful. And that goes to the fives. Um, he's going to try to his field craft to recover from that. He is successful. And that's a four. He's going to try to recover. That is done. But he did not get his pig. That's reloaded. Not reloaded. So we're going to turn four. We're halfway through the game. Spanish rebels have managed to get a couple of sheep. So far, the uh, French have got nothing, though they're on the verge of getting a, uh, a donkey. And we roll to see who has initiative for turn four. Initiative this time is goes to the French. So it starts with uh, the lowest guys who are French. Uh, that's the number two. He's way back there. He may need to start moving forward. Yeah. Gonna move over to here. They're moving a little closer. We go to R4, Alejandro. Alejandro doesn't want to go too far for those pigs. He's really gonna to try to capture a pig. Mattis runs over to the to the hay wagon. After getting his little bit of his uh, his courage back after having run from that near miss, Ben Juan needs to stay there because he's trying to get a trying to catch that uh, mule. I'm going to come forward. Of these rocks come after those goats. That's pretty brave. All right, so we're going to go ahead and shoot. This is a pistol, so it's three. Four hits. Four hits. The father has field craft one. He is in cover and they moved. So he takes two hits. Okay, so this is an example. This is the first time this has happened. Brother Alandro gets hit for, uh, for three hits still. So we roll first to find out what the reckoning is. 45. And this takes the place of the first of those three hits. Hit that didn't cause too much damage. So um, he takes the one hit that the shot called for because there was uh, two additional hits, he receives a total of three hits. Three hits. And that is from the officer towards uh, Brother Alondro. Brother Alondro hadn't been hit yet. The sergeant is going to be next, and he's over here. The sergeant has got some shooting to do. He's going to shoot at me. He's going to shoot at Santiago. So this is, uh, this is rough. This is, this is close. So it is a smooth bore musket. It is 2d10. Yeah, it's a plus d10 to the roll. So uh, the sergeant's got three, now four because of the range. Would you believe it? Only one hit. We, uh, wow, only one hit. Fieldcraft is two. He did not move, but we are in cover. 
and we stopped three. So that, that is fine. We recover from that. We are going to fire back, however. with our pistol. It is over uh, over seven inches, so that's not good. Uh, with a pistol, that's no plus. Uh, our normal is three. He did not move, but he is in cover. Oops, not yet. So three hits, three hits, he, he saves with two, and in cover, he stops three hits, ba ba boom So there's a pretty rough fight going on right over here between um, Santiago and um, Sergeant Laurent. We go into turn five, the uh, Spanish have the initiative. Uh, so the slowest guys go first. That's going to be the two who is way up here. He's starting to come back into the fight. And this may be his best move is to come over here. He's heading over there. Three. Clambering over the wall there. Ooh. He's going to go ahead and charge in. What the heck? The monk is going in. Figures, what else can I do? She's going to get shot otherwise, right? He's coming over here. I may need to think about get out of here, getting out of here soon. Now that he's got support coming. Oh wait, I need to take that guy out. So he's going to charge. So we'll go to the sixes. He's got uh, three dice. He gets a fourth dice because of the range. That's three hits. He stops one dice for who he is, one for cover, and one because the shooter moved. He stops two hits. He takes one. That's 40. He, he can't really afford that. He shouldn't have moved forward. He's hit for an additional two points of damage. Just a normal eye hit, but that's actually all he could take. So the first actual casualty is out. The first death of the game. So then we go to fives. So shooting to him. Way over there. Uh, his combat is two. He's over 12, yeah. That's two hits. So one for his ability, one for some cover, one for the movement. All he has to do is stop, the, stop two hits. Four. What the heck?
three. Only one hit. And stops it. He's going to shoot at the officer. Why not? He's only got two. One hit. I've got two. He moved. And I'm in cover. And I stopped two. All right, now we've got to do some combats. This will be the first time we've handled any uh, combats in the game. So, this combat's three. He charged. Just normal saber. Saber. So, charge and saber. Six, two, one, two, three, four. He takes just four points of damage to the priest. So his field craft, he's not great. His field craft is one. Oh, he's not in cover from him. Oh, he stops two. He still takes three points. Of, he takes three. Ouch. This is on the reckoning table. It's slightly different than the other one. Uh, 69. Take a knee, wound to the right leg. Uh, so he takes an additional two, but there was those others, so five. Takes additional five points to his leg. He is almost dead. That is not good for him. The priest next, actually. He's got two. He does not have a special weapon. He did charge into fighting. He hits two. All right. So this is the, the priest against uh, the guy fighter, the guy on the ground there. Uh, he has one. He is in cover. And he has a musket with bayonet. He stops two. I think I did two. So that's what we wanted. Uh, it's going to be his turn now. His two. He has a musket fixed bayonet. Three. He did not charge. That's a ten. That's two hits. So he does two hits, the defense of which is one, and cover is two. Two is all he's got. He does not make it. 85. Oh, ha, a wound. A sustained attack, the owning player moves the defender one inch directly backwards, and the defending character takes two fatigue hits. And that's all he can take. So he's knocked two inches back and then dies. Oh. Uh, he is, uh, because he's a uh, skill six, his field craft is two. He charged into battle. Uh, he is armed with a cleaver, which gives him no bonuses. He has one hit. Uh, to which uh, he is fought back by no cover, uh, probably one. He has one. He has a musket with a bayonet. None. So that's a hit. Fifty. 
smarts and offhand flesh wound. Uh, that only does an additional one point of damage. He could have dropped a secondary weapon in that hand, but he's he's fighting with a a musket, so so only one point of damage. That's not much. Now it is his turn. Uh, his combat is two. He did not charge. He is using a bayoneted musket. So that gives him two hits. Our hero. Our hero has one. That's it. Just one, one die. Nine. Oh. Now this goes on for as much as third, three turns. So now it is his turn again, and he's got. Guess I probably doesn't really keep the charge in um, anymore. I'm thinking. So that's one hit. Um. That parries it. It's his turn. He's got the slight advantage here. That's two hits. Parries it. His turn. One hit. Parry said. And his turn. Two hits and parries them. So they've been fighting back and forth and they end up exhausted and kind of, I think they separate when they're exhausted. So no, no answers there. Uh, and that is that. So we go to the uh, recovery phase. I have sixes here and here. Not here and there. Six there. Should roll twice. Okay, he reloads. I have a five there. That's reloaded. I have a pig here. Pig is not, not successful. And that is, oh, and over here. Oh, I think it's broken. That takes us to the end of turn five. We go into turn six. We roll for initiative. And, and the Spanish have it just barely. Well, that was a pretty, pretty bloody turn. The game is close to being over now, though. We really are moving along. Two. All right, this is a pretty, pretty dangerous uh, turn, I think. And it's these guys who are both just reload. So pretty quickly. I think I made a mistake last time. I'm pretty sure that this game allows you to shoot when you're running into combat. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, so. All right, it's going to be in order of how we, we ran. So this guy first, he's the very quickest guy out here. He's going to run in, he's going to do three. He's going to have four, four pistol shots as he goes running in. One, two, three hits. Addis's field craft is only one, uh, but his target is moving. Um, and he had cover. He doesn't have cover now. So he takes a hit. Yeah. 
Where am I? Character takes a glancing blow to the head. The character must immediately move d10 inches in a random direction and has negative one skill and negative one combat. D10 inches, random direction. So he's going to move four inches and he's going to move that way. So he moves out of the fight at least, but he's wiggling around and out of control. Uh, he also caused a another combat battle event. Broken Flint. The player who triggered the event can play this card on any character uh, the, this turn. The character's flint is broken and must be replaced in the recovery phase. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and break the guys he's attacking. So the sergeant fo runs forward, uh, unloading his gun. Uh, the sergeant shoots at uh, combat three. He gets a two for the range. One, two, three, four, five. So that's five, five hits. That's going to hurt. Five hits. My field craft is two. Uh, he ran in. I think that's pretty much it. Five hits. Let's stop it with three. I did not. I stopped one. So I take four hits. That's going to hurt. Four hits. It's a 25. I'm hit. Uh, that only does two points of damage, but, but it was five hits. So the other four... Uh, add to that, so six hits. Wow, that was bloody. I get to shoot right back as he's coming in. I'm shooting a pistol, that's only a d10. So three, four, Four. We hit for four. Four. He's got one defense. He stops one, so he takes three. Sixty-three. Blinded. Head wound. Blood in the eye. Character, character suffers two fatigue hits and one combat, negative one combat D10. So he takes two points plus the other two from, from me. So four points while going into a fight. That's really not very good. Now it's the sixes. Combat two, three, two, we stop those. Boom, that's not what I wanted. Over here. Nothing. All right, now it's going to be their turn. That's a five over there. These two, three, one. That's three. all of them. 
to E3. And over here. Two hits. Stopped one of them, not good. Oh, six. Damn you, sir. Uh, so that's three points. He shoots, but he's only shooting at one. Two for the range. One hit. No problem. One hit. And that's avoided. All right, so that gets, gets us through all the shooting of that phase, and we go into the damn fighting. Fighting is going to be rough. Let's go ahead and do it out of order and do this fight first. All right, so uh, his combat is three. He did not rush into the fight. Three. One hit. Nothing. That's a hit. 36. Ha, ah, a wound. Two points to Jacques Albin. This is his first hit, though. He's going to hit back. His combat is two. He's got a bayoneted musket. And he rolls two hits. Our guy has two field craft. And I don't think he gets anything for his musket. So. Stops one. I think I said he had two, so I'm going to go ahead and 85. Knock your block off. Deep wound to the head. That's not good. All right, so now he's only at two dice. Nothing. Three dice, one. One, 20, another deep wound. That's additional one point. He's probably not gonna live through this. It's his turn again. One hit, two saves, one, two, two hits, one hit, Zero, six, deep wound, three points. He's down, another one down, another down, slowly whittled away. Being in hand-to-hand -hand without the proper tools is not a good idea. Well, the French are wreaking havoc over here. That fight there, the highest guy is going to be, well, we'll do my guy first. So the leader has a combat of three. He's armed with a saber. Two hits. Uh, the fellow defending should have had one, two, but he loses a die. Uh, he stops one. He takes a hit because he's blind. Zero three. Gotcha. Mortal wound. He is defeated just like that. So there's a sword stab to Fred Bennett. It's a head or throat, and he is down. It 
Now for the other fight, the sergeant's going to go first on this one. Sergeant has three. Oh, should have had four. <laughs> Nothing. Um, fighting against smoothbore and a cleaver, so there's no bonus for those. Uh, but his combat is two. He does three. The sergeant uh, defends with two and one for the bayonet. He stops two, so he still takes one. 77. Hoy there, deep wound. Three points. He's in bad way. All right, now it's the sheriff's turn. The sheriff would normally have had three attack, four attack. So he's got four attack. Really, again, nothing. The sheriff is just really boning it up here. Combat back, it's just two, no additions. One hit. He's got two fatigue and a bayonet. Yeah, he's no problem stopping that. That was the second, wasn't it? Or was that the third? So the third, I'm gonna say this is the third. I think this is the third. One last fight. So he's got three. One hit. Esteban. Defends it wildly. He stops two, so no problem. Then he stabs back, but he misses. Uh, and that is that fight kind of worn out. And we go into the recovery phase. Got lots of recoveries. Let's do this in whatever order. One here. Nope. One here. Nope. One here. Yep. One here. Yep. Stupid pig. Yep, got a pig. So we go into turn seven. The game is almost done. People are wounded, shot up. All right, so we go through the last turn, exchange some shots back and forth over here. No real effect. We exchange some shots over here. No real effect. Over here, the sergeant manages to drop Santiago. Uh, they've been f fighting back and forth, to, but eventually the sergeant's better swordsmanship prevailed, or better bayonet ship, and he drops Santiago. Uh, Esteban manages to stay alive, um, also fighting with him. It does get wounded a little bit, but eventually the, bi the fight Peter's out, um, and we're left with only, what is it, three of the Spanish are still standing. We've got uh, way over here, Alejandro, we have Esteban over there, and miraculously Mat Matisse, uh, who took that hard hit in the head but didn't actually take any damage, is still around. Uh, on the French side, Lieutenant uh, Leon Gabriel is still doing quite well. Uh, so is um, Raymond Valerie. Back here is Jacques Albin and Sergeant Bernard. So they have four guys still standing. Um, slightly better condition as far as that store goes, but this is a game based upon the points of taking forage. So let's take a look and see what we got. The French have taken one donkey, that's worth five points. The Spanish have taken two sheep and a pig. Uh, so that is 21 points. So even though they took more casualties in the end, this did turn out being a Spanish victory. So there you saw a sample of uh, the game Forger. I haven't played in a while. I may have made a couple of mistakes. I, I hope I didn't. Uh, but uh, 
mostly that's <laughs> that's what the game looks like. Uh, it is a, a game with an awful lot of character to it. Of your individual characters have different traits and skills. Uh, it's a game where occasionally you'll be saved by a piece of your equipment being hit. Uh, how many times do you read about that, where a bayonet or a badge stops a, a musket ball. Well, in this game, that actually happens. Uh, so it's got a lot of character. It's very, very narrative. It feels very much like you're playing a, a Sharps Rifle book or, or something to that effect. The game is, uh, is very quick to play. It is very quick to pick up. It is very easy to play. You tend to stop looking at rules as the game starts going on. You start really knowing what's going to hit, what's not, what, what your chances are. The uh, you get a good feel for that. It's it's all so simple, so easy to run that way. The only thing you end up looking for after that, the reckoning chart or the butcher's bill. But that, again, is one of the things that gives this game a lot of its character, those uh, interesting accidents or wounds or situations that come from, from being shot. Uh, the game does have a campaign version in it. It has, it has a number of ways of creating characters. You can just sort of randomly choose them. You can roll characters. You can spend points to buy characters. You can just assign points. If you want, you can play a campaign game, and they do have rules for a campaign in the back. Uh, to be fair, the campaign game seems a little tacked on. Uh, it doesn't seem as well thought out as the rest of the game does. It works, but uh, it certainly has room for replacement. In fact, a game like this, a game like this with a experience point system or campaign system far more like, say, Frostgrave, what a great game that would be, where you could just randomly keep playing the adventures of these guys uh, throughout Spain. It's a very good game, very enjoyable, and I think games like this, these skirmish level games, it's a great place to get started. If you were interested in getting your feet wet in Napoleonics, but you've seen these huge armies, you see uh, thousands of figures, either in uh, 10 millimeter and small scale, and somebody playing something like um, Blucher, or you might see your... Um, uh, black powder games and uh, and 28 millimeter or whatever, but with just endless amounts of, of finished painted figures. This gives you a, a ability to get your feet wet with, I mean, you could buy 12 figures and have both sides covered. Uh, only plays on a 4x4 four four table, doesn't take up as much room, uh, doesn't need as much scenery to fill for that. It's a great place to get started in either tabletop wargaming in general or in uh, Napoleonic, if that's an interest for you. So uh, definitely do suggest looking at picking up Forager. It's uh, relatively inexpensive. It's an easy game to, to run. You probably, if, you, if you're an experienced wargamer, an experienced with Napoleonics, you probably have more than what you need already to play the game anyway. And the, the rule system itself, I don't think the world of the uh, campaign system, but the actual rule system is very, very elegant, very, very simple to use, makes an awful lot of sense, and is easily altered and applied to uh, other things. In fact, when I first played this game, a friend of mine was running it as a French Indian War game, uh, which isn't even really laid out in the books. I do uh, suggest Forager very highly, uh, a very enjoyable game, a lot of fun for a change, very sort of tongue-in-cheek fun uh, feel while still having a very interesting strategy and tactics. A very, very enjoyable game. I, I placed this, what, you, what year did this come out? Was it two, three years ago? It definitely, it was on my list of best games for the year it came out. Uh, anyway, uh, definitely rate this highly. I recommend it. It's one of the reasons I wanted to make a video of it. I realized I hadn't done one yet, and I don't think the game is uh, getting the attention it deserves, but it is certainly worth looking into. If you got some time, I would recommend giving this game a try. If you uh, have other questions regarding Forager, or if you have played the game yourself and would like to go ahead and make comments, please do that in the comments down below. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit like. And if you'd like to continue to receive notifications, to receive videos like this one, to help give you ideas on how you can spend your wargaming money or time, then please hit subscribe. Until next time, cheers.